David, he's not a follower, so he wasn't going to plant any vineyards or buy a vineyard in Blenheim. It was so far away from the other vineyards, I thought this was a pretty risky venture. As you come up from Christchurch, you know, you see the vineyards in Wipra, and then there's nothing. After he showed me the vineyard, it was clear to me that this was a stunning, stunning site for grapes. It was absolutely worth it. That beautiful vineyard and winery is located an hour and a half north of Christchurch and about 45 minutes north of Wipra. Pretty isolated in terms of wine production, but we really like it like that. David tells me that he had been away from New Zealand for quite a long time. When he saw all the plantings in Blenheim, he realized he had missed the boat up there. Tracked down a gentleman named Ron Sutherland. The brief was to scour the South Island to see if a, a site existed. David probably forgot he sent him out to do that. Um, and Ron probably came back to him and said, I found it. And David said, found what? David had to buy three farms, and they planted the grapes along the ridge of three of those farms. So the vineyard actually falls along the ridge line on these three different properties outside of Cheviot. Spiderwebs. The site is actually in like a, a small bowl of a valley if you like. The hills go from about 20 metres above sea level to about 95 metres above sea level. It's quite a little microclimate here. We do have lots of challenging weather. We can be very very hot in the summer and vice versa in spring when the hills around us have got snow on them we're subject to frost. The soils are compacted loose on top of alluvial gravels. Loose being the wind blowing dust and dirt over centuries that's been blown down the riverbeds or the old glacial terraces. We try not to use any harsh chemicals here. That's part of what New Zealand wine is looking for and sustainable wine growing is to show that you are being a responsible caregiver of the land. When you talk about Te Oar, it's about everything that encompasses the site. So that's the weather, the trees, the land, the aspect of where we are. And I also believe that the people are part of that Te Oar because it requires passion and energy for all this to happen. And that's why I say they're part of the Te Oar. Does that make sense to you, Garrett? Yeah, I only hear the end of it. <laughs> Most people, when they're developing a vineyard, they cut down all the trees, level all the ground out, but we've tried to keep it as natural as possible. It's just got a really nice rolling vibe about it. It's not one flat bit of dirt. It's got character really. That's what I like about it. Um, we used to own a house in the middle of the city as such. Didn't have much lawn. Really wanted a different lifestyle as well. So that was one of the factors when we were thinking about moving to Cheviot. And it's quite funny, it moved all this way. And then um, people I went to school with were down here as well. The biggest activity is, is what we're doing today, uh, harvesting it. It's the best time of year, really. See all your hard effort paying off. In an average year, we're probably about two weeks later in ripening. I think we end up with some really interesting depth of aromatic character, really throughout the range of wines, but particularly in things like the Pinot. Basically, I've been making wine in New Zealand for the best part of, well, for over 25 years now. I was approached in the very early days of Mount Beautiful, but really when this was still bare land. I've been involved in the wine industry basically since the age of 14 I suppose. So I did a couple of vintages overseas and then Dad got me to come down and do vintage down here and I've basically just stayed. So today at Mount Beautiful we're processing some Pinot Noir. All of our Pinot Noir is hand-picked. We go onto our vibrating table. Once we've gone from the vibrating table we go across the sorting table looking for things like botrytis, underripe fruit, raisining. We then go up the small elevator, which takes the whole bunches through to the de-stemmer. All of our Pinot Noir is 100% de-stemmed and non-crushed. So what we're trying to achieve is whole berries. We end up with softer tannins because we're extracting skin tannin rather than seed tannin or stem tannin. From the de-stemmer, you see the large elevator going up into the couve. So we're looking for minimal machine input and as minimal handling as we can possibly achieve. 
Initially, the vineyard just had a dejuicing facility. We would take the Sauvignon Blanc and then ship the juice to our production facility. We were doing a lot of work in the vineyard for quality. We were falling down on the production side. We really needed to build our own facility on site to take our Pinot to the next level. The wines have become overnight that much more consistent and the quality level has gone so much higher. Having the winery on site means we can say, ah oh, yes, this block is ready today and we can go and pick it today. We set up the winery so we can expand the red cellar coming east and the white cellar coming west. Did you just make that up or is that true? That's true. <laughs> Working alongside a family member is, you know, it has its, ch its challenges. I suppose like any working relationship does, the communication is probably uh, our biggest asset. Of course, periodically we have the odd conflict, but we know each other well enough to be able to walk away from it and, and then um, come back and, and continue the rest of the day without <laughs> biting each other's heads off, mostly. Mostly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Uh, the Land Rovers. Um, so we, Dave and I didn't realize it initially, um, but we, we soon realized we both have a passion for Land Rovers. In New Zealand, we have close to eight Land Rovers, including some ex-military, what they call one-on-ones forward controls that we use to cart people around the vineyard for tours. Probably 14 or 15 Land Rovers in both countries. As winemakers, what? <laughs> Bloody hell, there's another one. How many of those things are there? As winemakers, we collect V8 engines. <laughs> <laughs> when we built the vineyard and started that program, we had quite a gem of a finishing farm around the vineyard. David's other property, Esket Station, we finished that stock at the farm surrounding Mount Beautiful. And coincidentally, when we bought Caver Hill, really for Mount Beautiful, but it also is another breeding farm. So we were able to add into that program. A great day at work is the sun shining, the snow on the mountains, uh, green grass, when the dogs are well behaved all day. <laughs> yeah, the drama free day as everybody wishes for. <laughs> I'm based in Cheviot in Spotswood, 560 hectare finishing farm. We have Caver Hill which is 960 hectares. We also have Eskid Station which is 15,000 hectares. So the products that we um, produce on the farms, the half-breed wool is targeted for smart wool. Beef is targeted for the Japan market. The high country lamb is targeted for America and our export lamb is actually targeted for Europe. Grass-fed meat has that distinctive difference in taste and that's what we strive for to maintain. So dogs play a very important role in New Zealand farming systems. Uh, the heading dog doesn't bark it just turns the sheep in the direction it wants them to go. And then there's the hunter way, and he's all the noise. He's the one who barks and actually pushes the sheep along, and they do become part of the family. When you lose one through old age or an injury, it, it's very heartfelt. As you work with them every day, they, yeah, they become your best friend, as commonly said. <laughs> We brought Caver Hill and that was all an initiative from me to support this farm to help our profitability and have sustainability and control. There was a bonus in Caver Hill which also assisted me was Mount Beautiful was located on it. The exciting part about it all is that we use that property as our main tourism feature. The view from Mount Beautiful we can see all the way to the top of the Kaikoura Ranges down to the Banks Peninsula so it's an amazing outlook. And on a good day you can actually see a whale, the odd whale out at sea. The farm has multiple streams and springs that come up through it. It's a big goal of mine to make sure they are protected and kept pristine. Directly north of us attached to our property is the Waia River. It's always a pleasure for us in our spare time to go to the rivers and swim in these streams. So it's an important part of my family life to keep these at a quality standard. The Waia is quite an interesting river, it's a braided river, it's got a lot of the willows and that to jet boat around. And this property being 720 hectares with the vineyard, it's a big part of the ecosystem that supplies the Waia, which is what we'll stop here and have a look at. This is a good example of what we're trying to protect as a part of the Teese group. big part of what we do is we fence them off and we put natives and stuff in here. It's not really big enough for a jet boat too, we could have... <laughs> Do 
just doing best practices and lowest impact possible. We use water sparingly, not on any kind of uh, just regular schedule because that's how someone did it in the past. For us to leave the smallest trace possible. And that's the same for the properties we have here so that we can enjoy them not only for ourselves, but for our guests. When you come for a tasting here at Mount Beautiful Tasting Room, you can taste all of our current vintages, including Rosé, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Gris, Chardonnay, Riesling and Pinot Noir. We've got some amazing tour opportunities and the Mount Beautiful Tasting Room will be the base of it all. We'll be able to take you up to Eskid Station where you can get some of the country's best fly fishing for salmon and trout. We'll zoom you down the Waia River in the jet boat straight to the vineyard where you can do a private tasting or tour in our Land Rover 101s. We'll shoot you up to Kaikoura to do some whale watching or over to Hamna to do a day at the hot pools or maybe a day spa. From here is the base for all sorts of Mount Beautiful adventures. My little sidekick who comes with me everywhere is Murphy the Wowser. He's a cross between a mini schnauzer and a West Highland Terrier. Being a small dog is sometimes quite annoying to the bigger dogs, but base, you know, and him get along really well and have a lot of fun together. Where I can, I help out the teams in the vineyard and on the farm, be a support to the other managers. Usually I'm just running around trying to find them, get information from them, keep them in line. Everybody gets hired for one thing, but ends up doing a lot more. We take on a lot of different responsibilities beyond what we're initially, our initial brief is. And that includes having fun, as well as you know working hard. There's a group of over 24 of us now at social gatherings, so it gets to be quite a good barbecue or entertaining night. And we're all from different walks of life, you know, we're not all the same. You know, it's not 24 farmers, it's not 24 viticulturalists, it's 24 different people, which is, um, yeah, it makes for a great evening of entertainment. It's really nice from a winery point of view to be talking to Hamish about what's happening on the farm, you know. We'll enjoy sitting down, having a beer and just talking about our days. A lot of the people who work at Mount Beautiful actually live within uh, the, the greater Mount Beautiful area and the farm, so it's a very supportive environment. Now I like coming to work because of the, the contour of the land, the people that are here. Um, it's just got this amazing feel about when you're out in the vines that no other vineyard has got. What does make Mount Beautiful great is that it is unique. We aren't surrounded by a lot of other vineyards and so we do have to have that companionship with being farmers and viticulturalists and that because it's what we are. We're all friends at the end of the day, just do a different type of job. The vineyard's going to get older, it's going to produce more complex flavours and also be more expressive of the site in which we're at. I spent my childhood sitting on the front of the veranda at the farm looking at those stunning mountains. We're so lucky that we get to live in one of the most beautiful places. What we have here is something quite spectacular. You know, it says Mount Beautiful, but the mountain itself isn't beautiful, but the view is just stunning. You can see the, the vineyard and the whole valley, really. When people come out, we want them to experience what it is to live in North Canterbury and what really the team lives and works up here and it's all kind of a one big happy uh, lifestyle really. <laughs>